Hey, good weekend. Welcome to Leading Edge. I'm Jerry Anderson. The old Irish blessing says, may the road rise up to meet you. All roads lead to Rome means an outcome can be reached by several methods. A road less traveled means you like to find your own way. Don't necessarily need to follow in anybody else's footprints. Later this morning on this program, we're talking roads with the agency that plans our roads. Which projects take priority when it comes to our roads? And guess what? You have a say in the whole thing. And why not? You have to travel them. But first, I'm welcoming in for the first time to my leading edge table, State Representative Douglas D.J. Swearingen. It's the only time I'll say Douglas, okay? All right, sounds good. Because he wants DJ, right? <laughs> That's okay. correct. This is D.J. Swearingen, Republican, Ohio House District 89. He represents our many viewers. Hi there in Erie and Ottawa counties. Mr. Swearingen was appointed to the Ohio House last year when State Representative, I love this, Steve Arndt decided to retire, jump on his, I'm told, 50-foot sailboat and sail off for a great adventure. And then I'm told Steve came back and wants a bigger boat. I don't know if we can get an update on that or not. It's an amazing story. Representative Swearingen is a married father of three, a political science graduate from Bowling Green State University, then earned a law degree from the University of Dayton. When he's not legislating in Columbus, he practices law. You still practice law for the That's firm true. in Sandusky and Avon, Ohio, largely representing the interests of business and real estate transactions. Uh, you were already very much, though, DJ, involved in politics, though, as the GOP chair of the Erie County Republican Party. Given your district over there, you better have the interests of Lake Erie close to your heart. Right. Uh, what has Columbus done since your arrival um, to help alleviate the annual algal threat to recreation and fishing and boating industry and, yes, even our drinking water, as we well know here in Toledo? That's right. So the material piece of legislation that has been introduced and passed and we're working on finalizing presently is H2 Ohio. You know, the uh -huh. program has been launched. It funds um, restoration improvement projects for Lake Erie over a 10 year period. And we funded the first uh, several years. And um, you know, it, it funds initiatives such as wetlands, which helps mitigate water flow and phosphorus runoff into Lake Erie. Uh, its intent is also to help with sewer and water infrastructure improvements. So we're hoping that through this mechanism, we can help sty uh, stifle the uh, algal blooms. You also, speaking of the lake, uh, I think you sponsored the legislation, or backed it certainly, involving boaters that you think makes our waters, our shoreline more visitor friendly. Tell me about that. Yeah, so we have a, a bill right now, and actually the first hearing is going to be coming up on Tuesday. Is your bill? That's correct, in, in the Ways and Means Committee. And it's an effort uh, on two different fronts. One, to you know, continue to support our tourism industry, but also to help our marine technicians and our workers in the marinas whose employment may be seasonal yeah. uh, just due to capacity and, and workflow. So what this bill does is eliminates uh, what we believe to be a redundant sales tax on um, boats that come for repair and maintenance work to the marinas all along our lakeshore in Ohio. Um, you know, for example, if you buy a boat in Pennsylvania, yeah. let's say the, pay, the sales tax is 5% there. Ohio, let's say the sales tax is 7% here. If you just come here to have your boat serviced and maintenance by one of our marinas and worked on by one of our great marine technicians, right. um, we will assess you the 2% sales tax. So what this bill does is eliminate that extra sales tax. Uh, um, you weren't down in Columbus, were you, DJ? Uh, you weren't down there to cast a, a vote on the, the, the first energy bailout? I was not, no. But if I was there, I would have. Let, let's go with it. Yes. <laughs> you would have said yes. Absolutely. 100%. And, I, and yours is one of those. I mean, one of the power plants is in your district. Exactly. And yes. so we're talking jobs, nice salaries, families. Absolutely. I get that. But how does that not set a precedent that we really don't want to set, do we? Right. A failing company just come to us. We'll just charge all Ohio and keep you afloat. That's a great concern. So. I would take a step back and say, look at the market before we did House Bill 6. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there were energy sources that were already being subsidized by consumers in Ohio uh, over a period of years. So I would argue, especially representing Davis Bessie in my mm -hmm. district, that it was playing in an unfair market that was already being subsidized. Um, you know, those subsidies were on consumers' bills and were going to subsidize wind and solar primarily, mm. uh, the renewable energy sources. In addition to the jobs and school district support that uh, Davis Bessie, you know, supports in our area, um, this bill also is a, is a clean energy bill. Nuclear is 15% of our grid. 
However, it makes up 90% of our clean energy in Ohio. I do buy it's a clean energy bill, except that they took their foot off the gas on the, on, on the renewable thing, sure. and they also funded some coal-fired plants when it isn't exactly looked at as you know, clean energy. But, okay, that's looking back. I just wanted to get up to speed there. Now let's look ahead to the Ohio House session uh, in this new year of 2020. You're expected to deal with, in this down there in Columbus, Ohio School District grade cards, yep. uh, which few people like and which are leading to an explosion in the number of schools labeled Ed Choice. We've been talking about that on this show, which means that their students can leave and our tax dollars will fund, will follow them and fund a private school education for them over there. Do you agree that the system is broken and what do you think is the fix? It definitely needs addressed and, um, you know, over, I hope over the next period of, you know, this General Assembly and the next General Assembly, yeah we can take that head on. The problem that I'm discussing with our superintendents, you know, to some extent it has to do with the report cards, but more globally yeah. in Ohio, I believe we need to be open to multiple pathways to success in junior high and high school. What I mean by multiple pathways is there are those who may want to go to college and that's something that they want to pursue in order to obtain a career goal that they have in mind. Sure. However, there are those that they may not want to go to uh, college because you know, it's not the career path they want to take. Um, it doesn't fit in with their plan or they're just not interested at all. For those kids, there are plenty of options out there such as the trades that I think they need to be presented with. Thank you. We have talked about that a lot. The number of business people who have come here and said, Jerry, we, we're, we're begging for yes. it. If we just could have, but we have told a generation or two of kids, the only way you're going to be successful is you got to go over there and get that. Nothing wrong with a college degree. Absolutely not. Uh, but for some kids, have you ever hooked up with Bill Reinecke on this issue? He's big <laughs> on this issue. So Bill, Bill Reinecke is part of the reason I'm in the house because he okay. was on the appointment committee. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and Jerry asked here. Okay. Um, other things that we want to uh, talk about. Under fire is this Academic Distress Commission mm -hmm. charged with taking over and operating failing school districts. That rests control away from local school boards and administrators. Is that a good idea? No, I think local school boards and administrators know the local issues that are important to their communities. Mm -hmm. So as much as we can, we wanna help those individuals educate their kids. And really, you know, part of the problems that have been created have been state created. You know, they've yeah. been created by Columbus and on local school districts, oh, such, as, no, such as the report cards. There is no doubt about that. I think in some cases they're well intentioned. Absolutely. They're accountability for what we're paying for education. Could we make sure that, that you, you can read when you graduate? I mean, something like that. But we're also seeing this, this explosion of Ed Joy schools. Once those kids leave, they don't ever have to come back. Right. And, and, and I had said last week on this show that sometimes you look at Columbus, it's like, well, we couldn't beat the teachers' union, so let's just beat up public education. It's like they're trying to invite kids to go to charters, which are public schools, after all, but private schools as well. And I just think public education is a bedrock of our society. Mm -hmm. uh, we recently had a, a father who, on this show, sat right there, who lost a son, an adult son, to drugs. He is backing Senate Bill 3. It is a sentencing reform bill. Remember that interview? Sentencing reform bill regarding low-level drug offenses. It removes that felony tag, which this dad tells us made it virtually impossible for his son to find work, which led him then back to drugs and eventually death. Do you support such reform? Yeah, I think such reform is very much needed. Um, you know, first and foremost, if you talk to any of our sheriffs, they're going to tell you that these drugs are pouring in. Uh, you know, from, from Mexico and China mm -hmm. primarily. So I'm hoping that the federal government can address that issue. That's something, unfortunately, in the state legislature, we have no control over. So in the meantime, while we're addressing that issue, bills such as this are extremely helpful, um, you know, for a number of reasons, because some of these people, they are preyed on by dealers and those who manufacture these well, drugs. In most cases, the people we're talking about, these low-level drug offenses, they're not violent criminal offenders. No. They're addicted people. Exactly. They're sick folk. Right. All right. Uh, we haven't gotten to sports gambling, uh, guns. <laughs> he's DJ Swearingen. First time at my table, and he's new in the state legislature, fairly new. And can you hang around? Absolutely. All right, I'm going to take a break. Be right back.